Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. It's July 6, 2023. Great to be with all of you today. My name is Bob Lang, and I run ExplosiveOptions.net. Great place to be um, regularly during the day where we're trading um, options, calls, and puts all day long. Um, let's uh, We get together here on every Monday and Thursday, talk about markets, kind of get set up for, uh, for the trading day for the next couple of days uh, to see what's going on. Um, so currently, as we see right now, we see futures are down um, about 40 handles, just under 1% on the S&P 500. Dow Industrial is down 280. NASDAQ down one point, uh, one, a little over 1%, 1.2% 1 um, as well, too. So um, we're clearly facing a risk-off day here. And what, what's causing it? Well, overnight futures uh, took a nosedive. Um, let's see that right here. See the futures took a nosedive um, yeah, about seven o'clock this morning, um, and we were down about about 13 handles or something like that. And we've gone down quite sharply after the strong ADP um, report said that we had about 497,000 new jobs created, but also inflation is still a little bit hot. So um, people are trying to uh, match this up with what the NFP report is going to show tomorrow. And if it shows some strong gains, um, they're worried that it's going to look too inflationary. However, I would tell you this, especially with the with the increase in the 10-year yield, which you're going to see in just a few moments, um, I think it really, really tells you that the economy is strong and inflation, while still high, is at, at, the, at, at best coming down at worst, staying where it is. So um, I think uh, the Fed funds futures market, which is kind of paranoid anyway, is clearly portraying a um, a rate increase coming up at the next meeting. 93.6% chance of a rate hike in July. That would be July 26th. Um, September meeting, they're really, uh, there's only about a one third chance of a rate hike. And the reason why it's, it's, uh, it's holding this level, holding this bid up, is because you know if we get another couple of hot inflation numbers um they're gonna they're gonna push even further up to a five and a half percent um november almost baked in already for a uh, 50 50 chance of a rate hike so by my estimation of the of the fed funds futures market we're going to get probably the market is currently pricing in one hike next uh later this month and then another hike in november and then um, probably cooling off rate cut it ain't happening, folks. I know a lot of people were out there predicting and saying that inflation is coming down, um, that the Fed doesn't know what they're talking about, the Fed should listen to the Fed funds futures market, which is starting to price in two, maybe three rate cuts by the end of this year. It was wrong. Okay. So, you know, I, I would tell you, I would tell you this, pay attention to what the Fed is saying and what they were doing. All right. Pay attention to what they're doing. It's going to be the most important thing um, out there. Um, as it relates to markets for you. The liquidity uh, levels um, are starting to tighten right now. So we have to be aware of that. Um, markets have been real strong lately and, you know, for some illogical reasons, but we don't really care about illogical reasons. We pay attention to what the price action is telling us and we proceed from there. So as far as rate cuts are concerned, you can go all the way to June and see that, um, um, you know, maybe some rate cuts are on the board or on the table here, but only back to where we're at right now. Right. And, you know, they're, they're pricing in very, very slim chance in June. This is June of next year. Let's look at December of next year. Right. Maybe in the fours. But, you know, what? We're, we're talking about, you know, a, a year and a half from now where we could be back, back down over here. Lots can change in that short, uh, that a long period of time. So um, the S&P 500. Obviously, huge gap up last week, last uh, Friday, um, and moved sharply higher into the end of the month. And now it's kind of cresting over here. If we close below those lows um, from Friday, which it looks like we may actually do, if we open up here, see it lows are 44.22. If we close, um, uh, if we close yesterday at 44.46, obviously a full trading day left to go. We don't really know yet, um, but if we close below there, we're going to have a shot at closing this gap, which comes in at about 43.96. Okay, 
Again, we opened up at 44.22. That was the low of the day on uh, Friday. Um, came back on Monday with a with a, uh, a pretty decent day, and then you know lost a little bit yesterday, and then um, we could be losing it, uh, losing a lot of that, uh, some of those gains from um, from Friday uh, later on today. So we'll see what happens, how it goes. Um, markets are still in a nice uh, firm uptrend here, right? Um, who can blame anyone for for wanting to take a profit, right? Um, nice uptrend over there, and. Uh, Look, you know what? I mean, again, market's been on a on a tear. It pulls back, it goes up, and pulls back down. Markets don't go up every single day forever, right? There are going to be pullbacks, and there's going to be days where you're going to be wishing you had taken more money off the table in the prior day. I I beg and plead everybody in the chat room, anywhere I can talk to, um, to to go ahead and take money off the table. There's nothing wrong with it. I did a lot of it yesterday, um, so I'm sitting on a lot of cash. Um, and if there's some opportunities that open up today, I'm probably going to take advantage of them. If not, I'm just going to wait for the next opportunity to roll around. We do have a, a big jobs report coming tomorrow and volatility is going to kick up. Um, speaking of volatility here, we can see the VIX is up to 15.5. Um, uh, it's up over 10% today. So far, VIX futures are up. So if that holds a, holds a nice bid today, uh, 1620 on the on, on the VIX futures. If it if it holds a nice bid and starts moving up there, um, could be some problems, right? Um, we saw earlier um, strong move uh, from Meta. Meta was over 300 at one point this morning, slightly over that. It's pulled back a little bit um, from those from those uh, early um, pre market highs. Um, Spy is down. Amazon's down a little bit, um, but you know not too much damage here. Of course, um, uh, names that I've been playing lately, Upstart is a name that uh, I really like. It's down a little bit this morning. Again, my, with most of, most of tech, uh, technology stocks are down today, right? Um, and, the, and of course, the Dow is down, down sharply as well. Um, yesterday, uh, let's take a look at the internals from yesterday, and we can see how poor the VOLD was and the ADD line was as well too. We didn't quite have a trend down day here, but um, we did a, see a pop in the put call ratio and ticks were pretty pretty negative here. So it was setting up for a risk off day to come and that's today, all right? So what do you do? I think you just sit back and wait, watch what's going on. Maybe, you know, if you could take some more money off the table, go ahead and do that. If you need to raise some cash, I told everybody in the chat room yesterday, there's an exercise that everybody should do every single day. Three steps. A, look at your account. B, if you see if you have enough cash to go the next day or the next week or whatever, to be able to put yourself in position to take advantage of dips when they happen. And three, if you are short, then do some selling. Liquidate something. Raise some cash. Put some money in there. I, I'm I'm telling you, and we all are, we all suffer from FOMO, the fear of missing out, right? Especially when the markets are on a roll, like they've been lately. We don't want to miss out on that next big move up. I get it, but it's an irrational thought. It's irrational thought, and and thinking that way that you're that you're going to miss out, you're going to you're going to, you know, go into the markets with blinders on, and you're going to run into the brick wall because you're not paying attention to what's happening in front of you. Markets do go down. We're not in a bull market yet. We could be at the end of July and possibly into, into August, but we're not there yet, right? Pushing on the edge of it. So you still have to use some caution. You still have to have heavy high levels of cash. You got to still have to have protection on. I've been preaching this for this for, for almost, almost a year and a half now, right? The Fed changed the game in December of 2021. I said, I told everybody that, and uh, um, it's totally true. Now things are shifting a little bit, um, possibly in, into into a positive fashion. Maybe we're just going to, you know, uh, slog along for a little while until um, until inflation really starts to come down. But we really need to be prepared and ready for the next opportunity. And the only way to do that is to to raise some cash. All right. Um, uh, the data. <clears throat> we saw the ADP number came in at 497,000 new jobs created. 
that's a hot number. It's a really hot number. 228 was expected, um, 497. So people are trying to uh, consider that going to be the number tomorrow in the non-farm payroll. Of course, we know that ADP and non-farm payroll are highly uncorrelated. So it, we don't often see these numbers match up, but uh, we could see a, a, a bit of um, uh, a bit of strength in that non-farm payroll number. And if it does happen, we're going to see a big increase in GDP Q2 expectations. Of course, second quarter just ended last Friday. Uh, we'll get an adjustment on that um, from GDP now, the Atlanta Fed's website, um, in, a, in, a, in a few more days if the, if the jobs number is strong. So uh, we did see um, some Canada numbers out, exports, imports, and so forth. Jobless claims up a little bit. Yesterday, of course, uh, um, or earlier this morning, we saw challenger job cuts were down. And at 10 o'clock this morning, in about an hour from now, we'll have the uh, the JOLTS report, job opening, uh, job openings report um, that'll be coming out um, uh, for May. Um, it's looking at 9.9 million 935,000 right over here. And if that comes in higher, uh, like it did last month, um, it's going to be a uh, market could take another whack. So um, we'll see what we're what I'm going to be watching here today. Be watching this, okay? This is the VIX volatility. We're going to see if if the VIX of volatility sellers are back today, and if they're back, we're going to see the markets slowly but surely creep back back up, okay? But um, VIX being elevated here the last um, couple of sessions, um, basically paying it back from uh, from a back from from last uh, from last couple of days, right? Volatility dropped a lot on Friday. Um, it, rose up a little bit on Monday and it rose up quite a bit more yesterday and now it's up sharply today. So pay attention to that. Um, and, um, and I think it's going to be it. So I, I get everybody have a great day, have a great trading day. Look out, be careful today. Um, again, take some advice from me, raise some cash, smart thing to do. And um, we'll see you back on, uh, on, on Monday. It's hot today. Um, it's about um, 90 something degrees out here in new England. Um, I'm sure it's probably hot where you guys are at. I think we had the hottest um, day on record on July 4th um, for the whole for the whole planet. So it's pretty uh, pretty hot out there. So keep cool and uh, you know, can we like uh, some like it hot? Have a great weekend, everyone, and I'll see you guys on Monday. Thanks. Bye.